So whenever I come across something three times in the same week, I know it's a good topic to be sharing with you. So today I'm going to share some ideas on storytelling and how that can help you with reaching your students and connecting with them. And we're always trying to figure out how to engage with them. So let's use some storytelling. So here, let's get to it. Welcome to the Course Creators HQ Podcast, helping you navigate the latest techniques for creating and marketing online courses. And now, here is your host, Julie Hood. So welcome to the Course Creators HQ Podcast in episode 188. We're going to be talking about storytelling today and how you can use it. But before we do that, a couple things. The links that I talk about will be at coursecreatorshq.com slash 188, or it will be in the show notes. So you can grab those. And then the other thing I want to make sure we've just got a couple weeks left of Course Profits Workshop that I've been doing. So if you haven't signed up for that, you'll want to jump on it. Uh, it's, it's all free uh, to give you some ideas on how to make more profits and get in front of more students and interviews with some of my favorite experts. And then the other thing that's happening on April the 27th of 2024, if you happen to be listening to this later, we're going to do the mini course at Magic Workshop again. So lots of fun things happening. If you haven't taken that yet, I highly recommend it. I'm giving this special offer so you can do it for just $47. And we're going to dig in on some of the new techniques around mini courses and things that you may not be doing yet. So specifically designing a mini course to be taken on your phone, how you use micro learning to reach people now in the TikTok age. <laughs> and I even have a free hosting tool. So you won't even have to pay to host and sell your mini course. So it's going to be a great workshop, hoping to get you through your mini course in a couple hours. You may have to record videos later, but get the main setup in place. Plus it's got some AI tools uh, built in to help with the outlining. So it's going to be really good. I hope you will join us for that at coursecreatorshq.com slash mini course workshop and storytelling. Okay. So here's how this all came up. I was working with my client, Loretta. She's in my accelerator program and we've been working together for the past few months. She actually helps people, professional women internationally who want to improve their English skills. And so she has a lot of different ways that she helps them one-on-one -on -one coaching and she's doing a course and she's got a mini course. And so we've been working through all of these different things and uh, realized part of what I like to do is really focus on what is going to be the best specific plan for you. So what is your custom approach to getting in front of your right students? And it's different for different people, depending on uh, where your audience is and where you like to play and connect with people. So there isn't a one size fits all kind of solution, but she has a big audience on LinkedIn that she has already connected with. So we got her going on her LinkedIn newsletter. She has almost 750 subscribers in just a couple weeks, which is incredible. I'm so excited for her. But one of the things that she was doing is as part of this email newsletter, she has the best stories that she's telling, that she's sharing with people. And very very heartwarming and endearing, plus having a lesson in them. So it was tied back to what she was offering. So, so good. And I was like, mm, I should talk more about storytelling. And then <laughs> I got an email from Pat Flynn, which he is just an incredible marketer all around. If you haven't connected and uh, checked out his Smart Passive Income podcast, he's got so much good stuff. But he sent an email first with a really good subject line that said, how to ensure you take action and see results. 
So, of course, when I saw that, I was like, oh, oh, you know, not only for myself, but for my students, making sure that they're taking action, what can happen? And what is his big secret here? <laughs> so I started reading this email and he starts with a story from years ago when he was working in an architecture firm and talks about a new concept that I hadn't heard of before, but he explains it with this story about talking how he had uh, got into, it's kind of a longer story, but basically that he had a deadline in order to learn how to use this software, but he tells it in a nice storytelling fashion. And he calls this a force function, which I had never heard that term before. And he was talking about the power of a force function. And then after he tells the story, which was really good to pull you in and kind of like get you intrigued about what he's talking about, then he gets into more of the definition. So he defines, just so you know, in case you're curious, a forcing function, and this is from his email, is a built-in mechanism that modifies our behavior by making it easier or sometimes necessary to do what's beneficial in the long term but might be challenging or less appealing in the short term. So that's the definition of a forcing function. And then he goes into the email continues with some of the different types of forcing functions. So the thing I want you to pull from this, a couple different things. First is he used the story to introduce the concept and to give us a specific uh, like placeholder of how this fits and how this force function fits into real life. And then he dove into more of the, what is it and how do I use it? And the nitty gritty of the concept, but the story is what pulled you in and made me interested as I was reading through it. And to me, that is an incredible advantage. And sometimes I have to decide, I jump back and forth between should I use more stories or not? Because there's other times, and I'm sure you've come across this too, where you just want to get to the point. Like you don't want to wade through a big long story. You just want to get to the concept. And I see this most often <laughs> when I go to a website with a recipe and they want to tell some big, long family story about the recipe and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I just want the recipe. I really don't need the story. <laughs> but it's those stories that connect with your audience. So I think you have to come to a balance of how you're going to go about this and how you're going to use storytelling to connect with your audience. And so the third thing that happened then this week, I was on Amazon and a new book came up from Jim Edwards, which he is an old guy on the internet as far as has been around um, longer than me. And I bought one of his early, early how to do an ebook things way, way back in the day. So he has some great stuff on copywriting. So I always like to hear kind of his opinion on things. So he had released a new book about storytelling and I'll put the link in the show notes for you. So if you're interested, after you hear this, you can get a hold of it. And it's called The Story Selling Secret, a simple five-step blueprint for using personal stories to create emotional connections, make yourself unique and increase sales. So great title, I thought. Uh, also, uh, the, the idea of using stories to get more sales is very essential, very important from a marketing perspective. And so I'll give you just a little bit of the ideas from here, but then please grab the whole book if you want to really dig in. So when you're thinking about telling stories, they really have a way to connect with your audience in a way that no other technique really does very well. And it's because as human beings, we have evolved and we learn through stories. And that, you know, if you think about it, when you were young and you were a child, your parents were always reading you stories at bedtime and telling you stories. And so it's a very common way to learn. It also uh, gives your audience a way that they can put themselves in your shoes 
And so they can see themselves in a similar situation, either as you or whoever you're telling the story about. So when I was telling you the story about Loretta, it probably helped you connect more to what I'm talking about, about how she's you know, doing her custom plan based on where her audience is, that kind of thing. It also helps you as the expert become more credible and more authentic, especially when you have really good stories. I think they add to your authenticity. And if you have vulnerable stories where it's showing you something that uh, you've overcome, I think it also adds another level of depth with your audience. So you've overcome something, you've survived, you've gotten to the other side. So you were in this place and there was this bridge or the steps that you went through to get to this other place. And so you can take your listener along that journey or your reader or your, your video watcher, whoever it is you're in front of, they can go on that journey with you. It also is one of the best ways I think to help them remember things. So when you're trying to teach and when you're trying to connect with an audience, a story really sticks in their mind and helps it stand out for them. So for example, I have a story when I'm talking about the map of the journey that your customer is on. I like to talk about how my daughter used to watch this Dora the Explorer cartoon when she was little. And the big theme of that cartoon was that they had this map with these three different places that they were playing along. And the map was one of the characters on the show. And that was always my favorite part because the map was the one that was telling everybody where to go and what was happening. (laughs) And they even had a song, I believe, about the map. (laughs) And so when I tell that story about watching that cartoon with her, it helps you as a listener to think about the customer journey in a different way. And you can think about the journey of your customer along the map that you have put together for them and along the things that are happening to them. So it's a way to connect in a new and unique kind of way. It also makes complex ideas a little bit easier to understand. And this is when you have really good stories that you can simplify things down And you may have to put some effort into making those work, but it can help simplify things. And the really best stories, I think they can even motivate your audience to take action. So you've got this really great story and they are so excited about it that they will jump in with you or take the next step or do what you want them, you'd like them to do next. So all of those are super advantages to using stories. The, the other side of it is it does take a little bit more effort to put together the story and make it a, a good story and to get good at storytelling. So that's what Jim Edwards does with his book. And so he has five main steps and I'll just kind of give you the short versions and then you can dig into the full book to get the full steps uh, if you're intrigued by this idea. So the first step is to create a inventory, an inventory of your personal stories. So what are some of those things that you could be telling or that you could notice you could be sharing? Step number two is to craft strong narratives. So this is uh, where you think about, okay, what is the takeaway that I want somebody to have? How am I going to open the story? What are the distortions? descriptive words and the language and the details that um, uh, activate the senses, like how can I add those in? Step three is decide how to deliver a vivid and descriptive story. So, and this is my side of of this, this is my thought, not from the book, but my thought is, what is that journey of the story going to be? So the beginning, the middle, the end, what is that overall arch of your story? What's that going to be like? Step four is to then go and incorporate these stories into your marketing and your sales materials so that you're using them really well and you've gotten places where you can share them and you've pretty much memorized them so you can use them over and over again. And then step five is to measure your results and then kind of evolve your storytelling skills. So you can see 
It's a great framework for adding those concepts in to help you connect with your audience and get more sales. So I do think it is a delicate balance between using stories and just getting to the point. So I noticed one of the things that Pat Flynn did in his email is he had some subheadings to the so he had the story and then he had the concept later on and he used those subheadings to break it up so technically I could have skipped the story if I was in a hurry or I wanted to just jump down to the the meat of it so I do think there's some ways that you can hit both sides of it you can tell the stories for the folks that really love them and you can get to the the nuts and bolts for the folks who are uh, time crunched and want to get to the good part (laughs) so um Play with that. Think about how you can incorporate some new stories. Maybe check out Jim's book and see if these kinds of things are resonating with your audience. That's the big piece of it is you want to have places where you are sharing these ideas, sharing these stories and seeing what kinds of responses you get. So it's one of the things that makes me sad about Clubhouse because that was always a really great place to test your messaging. You could get do a room and get in front of a bunch of people and kind of get their feedback on it and see what resonated. So some of the, you know, now you may have to do maybe some lives or uh, send it out a story in your email newsletter, see how it resonates, and then use those really persuasive stories to connect with your audience and, and help you as you're moving forward. So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening and for being here with us. I appreciate you. Thanks for any five-star reviews that you feel like leaving. They help us show up higher and get in front of more folks. So I totally appreciate it. Can imagine me doing my happy dance (laughs) Uh, every time I see one of those new reviews coming through. So thank you so much. And then think about the mini course magic workshop. It might be perfect for you if you're been on the fence about getting going on your courses and you're like, I just need to do this. This is a really great way for you to jump in and get something live and get it done in a couple hours. So thanks for being here. Have an incredible, incredible week. I'm so glad to have you as a listener and I wish you well. Sell lots of courses this week or just get your messaging and your stories out to your audience. We need you. So thanks so much. Have a great week and I'll talk to you again soon.